the goal were here. This place was wonderful. But you can see in five months how it has changed. You see the trees are falling, everything has fallen. Then you can imagine how about three centuries ago, if in five months, you can just see what has happened. In five months, we were here five months ago. In January, you saw the... Five months ago, this place was clean. We had a population of over 300 personalities here with chairs and everything. But five months after, you see where we are. And if the council didn't try to do this, we didn't have even seen anything. All of these vestiges are lost in the forest. They are lost in the forest because uh, no funding to keep this place up to date. So this area here, you see, this was like um, uh, the workshop where they had all their food and whatever they were doing. And um, here, this is where they, they, they tied the slaves. This is where the slaves were tied. We'll go down again. I will show you where the slave master was living, the English slave master. This oh. come, come. And giving me the honor and the responsibility of bringing some of our sisters and brothers from the diaspora back to share this experience, uh, this incredible experience that I've had with uh, some of you that are here uh, today. Because of time and because they're waiting uh, for us, we would like to say thank you to our brother Mayama Mambo, to the Limbe uh, City Council. Three, Limbe, Limbe three, 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 Limbe Three, yes, <laughs> Limbe Three City Council, to the chief that was here, and to everybody else who made this possible, and to Ms. Angela Kwan, um, who worked very hard on this, but for reasons we all know could not be with us today. Uh, just briefly, to answer some questions that some of the diasporan members had. This began um, as a research for the first African Reconnection Program that uh, was sponsored by a Cameroonian group. I was the researcher for the group. Asked about slave trade sites in Cameroon, they said that they didn't know of any. Uh, with the assistance of seven undergraduate students at Arizona State University, who worked diligently with me day and night from the announcement of the program in September to December 26, when the trip began. We were able to locate 135 slave ships that left the Cameroon territory. That is not the total, but that is what we had come up with at the time from the documents there. Just uh, before we left the U.S., we located two other of the slave ships, the 137 so far, we've got the national origin, the English were the main slave traders that we've been able to identify so far, but the Portuguese um, and the Spanish and others, including the U.S., was involved as well. These are government documents, but there are also other private documents that exist, and there are also archives in other countries and other languages. So I'm staying on until August to continue the work. And the students, one is here, my daughter, Ndome Kari, and um, we continue to work on this. Uh, so far, what we've been able to locate, most of the slave ships left from uh, Vuri uh, in Douala mm -hmm. as the... Uh, We've, we've seen uh, videos and uh, we've seen a letter from him as well. So far, um, we know that uh, 13 of uh, what we have located and identified left from uh, Bimbia, left from this place. Uh, this is only one of the remnants, uh, but as we go deeper inside, there are countless, uh, there are countless of uh, these slave forts that uh, remain. But as my brother said, we need to continue the research and also we need to have more resources to advance uh, the research as well as uh, access um, to the site and to the building. And Limbe 3 City Council is working diligently on this and we have a meeting tomorrow that will work on this as well. With the research, I don't want to go on for too long, but we have been able to identify names of many, of over 2,000 that were enslaved and brought uh, 
to the various sites. So now we're working on the names, getting to know who was taken, giving um, an identity, a face. Um, and I would be happy to share more of that uh, um, information um, as, we, as we proceed. The walk for us is very tough. But if you can imagine, people walked from the deep interior of this country. People were dragged from the deep interior of this country and were in these places. Some of the documents tell us that in some places, there was never less than 10,000 enslaved Africans at a time. That was the human cargo. They called us black ivory, black ivory. So, I'm really grateful, I'm really thankful to God, to the ancestors, to the God energy in all of us that allows us to be here again today and to say that we have come home. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much, Professor. The assembly here today is that um, from the first day that I got connected to our sisters and brothers from the diaspora, I've all along de dedicated my life, my time, and thank God I've gone on retirement, so I have all the time. <laughs> I have all the time. And um, she's been doing a great job from the first day I met her in December 2010. 10. 2010. The first, I brought the first group here, the very, yes. very first group here. Yes. They had left her behind. I brought her all alone here. From that day we connected. Yes. And from then we've been in touch all along. Yes. And, um, and they are the eyes on the ground. Yes. This is not uh, one person yes. or one exactly. person and research team. They are dedicated people so. like our brother here who continues to work and uh, the Limbe City Council yeah. as Limbe well. Limbe 3. Three. Limbe 3 City so Council. What I keep telling, you know, it's not easy because you come and see the vestiges of the past. Yes. It's not easy. I was just telling you, we were here five months ago, and you can imagine what has transpired within five months. Just five yes. months, this place is all covered again. Then you can imagine what transpired more than four or five centuries. Mm. So my worry, me personally, my worry is for us to see how we can restore this place for posterity. Mm how we can restore this place. It shall be. The council is a very small young council, just yes. five years old. They can't do anything. Most Cameroonians didn't even know about this place. They are discovering yes. it now. Because of all the research that has been done, with us who knew it from birth, I think we are willing to support whatever effort is put in for us to have this place preserved so that when we are gone, our children and children, children, for posterity, will always come back here and say, this is where we belong. Because um, uh, if we start telling you the history of it, the English, she's done a lot of research. You go back and read it. And, um, and she knows very well that most of our brothers and sisters are not even in, in the United States of America. Most of them are in Brazil, where you have the biggest African community. Yeah, if I can just yes. say, of the yes. 137 yes. ships we've identified, um, and I won't go through all the data, but at another time we could do it, 26 of those slave ships went to Grenada. Mm -hmm. um, and Imani, in her presentation last night, showed the ancestor circle underwater mm -hmm. in Grenada. And because uh, the yearwoods are from Barbados, um, I made a point, and I'd like to say 14 of those slave ships went to uh, Barbados. And I truly believe that most people from Grenada are Cameroonians. Cameroonians. Um, so we're hoping as we continue with the research, research. and with the DNA connections, um, we'll be able to uh, establish uh, with even more scientific basis uh, whether or not that is the case. And um, I, would be re I would be remiss if I didn't say Dr. Kittles, Dr. Rick Kittles, who developed the DNA technology that allows us to trace roots was also here um, on this last trip uh, that our brother here, uh, Miambo, uh, 
was the MC for this program and uh, uh, Cameroon uh, with us we discussed the purification ceremony um, that took place the second African reconnection program and we have video and many of you were here filming or at the event and uh, I would like to share with uh, those that have not had the opportunity to watch and Afrique Avenir um, also has uh, a lot of the films uh, many of them done by Ruth uh, Esange, who is with us today. Ruth? So please, because yes. of time constraints, we will just have to continue down. Yes. So that we play post behind. And it can also be a, like a shotgun house. You know, shotgun houses built in the U.S. were built that way so people could not escape.